Let's look at a viewer's Excel budget. Good evening, everyone. Florian Heiser here, and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because we're going to do something a little different. Tonight, we're going to have a look at the actual budget a viewer has emailed through to me. Now, he sent it through because I will often suggest that people, well, scenario. Jump into Excel, run a scenario of if you're going to buy that house, if you're going to invest that money, what would happen if shit hits the fan, to be quite frank, and your finances get in trouble? Will you be able to manage? Will you be able to plan? And I thought this was a fantastic idea just to go through an example of what someone uses to manage and plan their finances. Now, uh, he gave this to us, removed all identifying information, and is happy to share what they've done here because well for some people uh, it gets a lot it could be intimidating the idea of going into excel how do you do it and seeing an example could probably be really really useful it's like with any job so let's uh, jump over to that screen and i'm going to try i'm going to try and do something a little funky let's see how this works boom now i've got a different camera angle here look i'm using a two angle two camera angle shot there we go with our AI removed background. There you go. So here is the budget, everyone. Let me have a shot of coffee as we go through this. What we have here, you've got is weekly wage and expenses budget or breakdown. Now, depending on how often you receive money will depend on how often you, you need to manage this. Uh, we track everything on a monthly process. Uh, some people will do it weekly, each to their own. I think weekly could be smart too because if, if you've got weekly expenses and if you've got a mortgage, even just paying weekly will have benefits in the long term. You'd be surprised how much it adds up. So it's probably a good mindset to get into a weekly um, weekly perspective. So let's have a look here. So what, what has he got? He's got his expenses listed out here. So here you go, expenses. So every week, water. 11 bucks, okay. Gas, $8. Electricity, $9. I wonder how long that's going to be 9 bucks for. <laughs> that seems really cheap. Or maybe just my power bills are way too high. I, yeah, I've got a lot of computers running. And it's not doing anything ex exciting other than educating children. Rates are 42 bucks. Cleaning is nothing. Home insurance, $17. Credit cards, 40 bucks. The phone, $13.38. Netflix, $2.65. Stan, $1.61. A mortgage, $400 a week. That, that's a manageable mortgage right there, $400 a week. You've got groceries at $225 a week. That's not that much. That's pretty pretty cheap for a family. But, I mean, there you go. You can find ways to make. Oh, wait a minute. Times that by four for, for a month. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm comparing it to my... Grocery bill. <laughs> we were a little higher than that because we've got so many kids. Swimming lessons are nothing, and childcare is $67.30 a week. So that has a total of expenses there of a or of expenses other than car at $836.94. Okay, so I mean this is all you need just to even just to put pen to paper to get these expenses down is probably a first step that you, you need to do. If if you're feeling intimidated or overwhelmed by your finances, this is the first thing they always say to do is to write down everything. And sometimes it could just be, I mean, what happened for us was we just got so busy. Life just got so hectic. We had all these projects, everything going on. And I, I would just, okay, I'd order that, I'd order that, I'd order that, so subscribe to that. And then until you take a step back and look at all going, shit, look what money I'm wasting on that. I could save money there. So you've got car insurance at $12.58 and then a car loan at 100 bucks. So if we go over to here, so you can see the total expenses here are $949.52 with a wage of $1,388 a week. So that means they've got $438 left over after their expenses. So let's see what they're doing with those expenses, which is over here. So they've got, they've got uh, the, oops, here we go. They've got the main bank account, 28 bucks 48 is going in there, so I'm assuming that's left over. Okay, that's the sum of all of this here. There we go, left over. So they've got the buffer, 
$1,000 minimum at all times. Okay, that's their buffer, 200 bucks, which is good. You want that. You want a, a, you know, a buffer fund. Another thing that the Dave Ramsey approach is to have like an emergency fund. We need three months of your expenses. So if we say here, their expenses are about a thousand bucks, you know, give or take, you probably need three thousand in that emergency fund, you know, which could be separate to your buffer, but it could all honestly, it's probably the same thing. Um, ancillary uh, costs of children twenty dollars. Yeah, I mean that makes sense. Kid, there's always little things like clothes and stuff, but kids are a lot cheaper than you realize. Okay, don't believe the media, guys. It's Bullshit, they're not that expensive. Trust me, I know. So leftover saver, 100 bucks. Okay, good. There we go, another savings he's got going there. Term deposit for kids' future, $10. Okay, good. Say, putting something for the kids. A silly saver. So that's like the silly spending. That's like the, um, the credit card, the splurge card. You know, that some of the, uh, what's his name? Pape has, or Pope has? Pope. And then maintenance and upgrade expenses for the house is fifty dollars. So if we go, if that's a week, equals that times fifty-two, that two thousand six hundred. Yep. So let's have a look at some mortgage calculators that they've got here. So the purchase price of five hundred and ninety thousand dollars, reasonable price for a house. Deposit of a hundred grand. So they've had to work hard to get that. Build a hundred grand up. Mortgage at four hundred and ninety thousand, and the interest rate they're comparing here. 5.49% to 7.49%. So we're looking at, they've got the 30 year here. So they've got all these different factors. And this is the total, I'm assuming that's the total repayment, two weeks. What's he got here? That's U16 divided by two. Why is he breaking that into two? Or oh, is that for each, each partner, I'm assuming? So have you got the finances split or not? I'm, I'm not sure. What's he doing here? Okay, so this is, What's the formula? Ah, okay. Now, see, this looks really complicated. This looks really complicated. But what you're doing in Excel, you want to go equals. Um, really, what you want to do is the repayment. Payment formula. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Formulas. Here you go, financial. Um, oh, you know, to be... Brutally honest, guys, I'll bring up Google nowadays because it's just the world. And I'll just go Excel home loan or loan repayment formula. Repayment formula. And you can go here and you can get different formulas. For figuring out PMT calculates the payment for a loan based on constant payment and constant interest rates. So PMT. So let's see, have he, has he been using that one? No, he's using something with power. Okay, he's using something different. Um, but you can see here, PMT is here, and then you've got the rate, the NPER, which is the number of payment periods for an investment based on regular constant payments, and PV is the returns of the investment. So jump into Excel and find the formula that you want and just stick it all in here of what you're doing. Okay, so then you've got the comparison. So here's the scenario now, and this is the other scenario of what it's going, what the difference is going to be. And so, okay, our interest rates are up. Reserve Bank screwed us over. Repayments are going to go that. We have to find say 150 bucks extra a week. So that that what what you do is you go over here. You're going okay. Leftover savings. We're going to have to cut that. We're going to have to take a bit out of the buffer. There's 150 bucks there. Or okay, silly spending. We're going to cut that in half. Um, we're gonna we're gonna cheap out on you know get rid of the stand get rid of the Netflix, you know these type of things that you want to be able to cut and you can make these decisions when you have the information in front of you. It's a lot less intimidating when you don't. When you know you and your partner will sit down and have a discussion over it. And here we go. There's an extension for a hundred thousand dollars, and they're calculating the repayment rates of that as well. So I mean, this is it's really pretty simple what they've got here. There's not much to it, but this is really powerful if you've, you're not used to it. One, one of the, the strategies they always suggest in the, these financial guys like Pape and, and um, Ramsey, it's about communicating. It's like you and your partner, you're a team, you work together, 
you need to communicate on a regular basis about these type of things. You know, you go, honey, I, I'm worried about, you know, I'm worried interest rates are going to go up to, you know, 8.9%. We've got to find out another 260 bucks. You know, it's, uh, they've, they've lied to us. The banks have lied to us. The Reserve Bank's screwing us over, you know. So where, where are we going to find that? And you can do that. When you have this information here, you can do it. You, you can feel a lot calmer with what's going on. You know, I'd also have, I mean, he's probably pulled this out, but you'd have your bank accounts there and your, your investments and, you know, tracking how they're going. Uh, one thing I'm doing is tracking like my dividend payments every month just to see the line slowly, slowly go up. You know, you want, you want to have that positive, positive feedback loop. But I think this is a fantastic little example here, you know, and this empowers you. This empowers you to make decisions if things go awry, if there are problems and issues with it. Uh, so yeah, guys, I thought this is really, um, hang on, we'll jump, we will jump over here. This is really kind of the viewer to uh, share this unprompted. You know, they just sent it through and, and suggested I share it with, with other people. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll upload this file, guys, if you want to play with it. Now, you've got to understand it's not financial advice. It's an example file. Uh, you shouldn't listen to YouTubers anyway for financial advice. There's an article, bloodynews.com, about some YouTuber or, or, or influencer, whatever the hell that means, telling people about this 300% um, return financial course and she likes the guy because he doesn't drink chlorinated water and all this other bullshit. If the returns are too good to be true... It's bullshit. Okay, it's that simple. Just put your normal thinking hat on. It's bullshit. Maybe I'm just getting too old for this, guys. What do you reckon? But at least, hey, at least we can share and discuss. And I guarantee there'll be some people that are, have never even seen a little budget like this before. They weren't exposed to it at school. And it may have been a bit intimidating. And seeing this will ho hopefully help them, particularly the younger people. When you've got, you know, you're young, you've got all the time in the world, you don't need to worry about this shit. The younger you get started getting control of your money and just planning it and making it work for you. And the first step is to track your expenses. Like, we'll jump back over here. The, like, all of these things you need to go through. I mean, let's see here. There's one thing missing here. There's one thing missing. Do you know what it is? Where's the entertainment? Probably, probably living in suburbia like me, so entertainment is Netflix. There you go. That's the entertainment budget right there. Um, you know, he's, so it's not going out on the piss, is it? That'll save you some money. Where's the eating out? Where, where's the smashed abs and eggs budget? Right there. You know, smashed abs and, and toast. You know, so you could, I mean, a phone bill, $13.30 a week. You get that cheaper, if, but you want, may you need the data. I mean, what would I do to save money? I'd get rid of the credit card. Number one, ditch that, get rid of the credit card, get rid of the car loan, get rid of those two things. And then that's another 140 a week you've got to spend on everything. That's a big chunk of your mortgage extra that you can pay to get it, get it sorted. So yeah, because what you'd also have here is you list all your debts uh, and you'd, well, there's two strategies to paying off debt. Say you've got a credit card that's 10 grand and a car loan that's 15 grand. You pay off the credit card first because it's the smaller amount. It may also be the highest interest. But say the credit card was was uh, twenty five grand and the car loan was only five. You, that's all you got left. The idea is you hit the car loan first, you ignore the interest to get the psychological benefit. But you know it depends on your circumstances and you got to read through your contracts and all of these things. But you want to get you want these two guys gone because then that's another hundred and forty bucks. So let's say let's stop drawing on this. Let's let's say play with this here whoops wait we go here credit card zero car loan zero and then you're seeing here the leftover is now 578 dollars so he's got another 168 to play with so let's go okay i'm going to increase that buffer to 300 there you go and i'm going to increase the silly saver now to 98 dollars Oh, we'll, we'll put it 90 bucks. There you go. $90 a week, silly saver, so you can have some a bit more uh, splurge money if you want. So, you know, they're, they're, that's why you want to get rid of these debts and these things. But no, this is, this is great. So, and 
and uh, we'll just jump over here now and have a bit of a chat. So thank you very much to the viewer who sent this through. I really appreciate it, and I think some people will enjoy it. What suggestions do you have, guys? Share them in the comments. And what do you do to manage your finances? Do you use an Excel table? Do you use the envelope method? You know, get your paycheck and divide it up, put cash in different envelopes. Do you have multiple bank accounts that you shift the money around in? You know, there are all these different strategies that people use to manage it. And you want to get control of it because then you know what's happening. You don't want it to overwhelm you. So this is very encouraging. Take care, everyone. Have a great day. And uh, like, share, and subscribe. Do all those YouTube things. Check out Heiser Bim and Heiser Does for other content I create. And if you're a fan of the channel and want to support us, wait a minute, nope. If you're a fan of the channel and want to support us, you can on uh, YouTube or Patreon using our referral links, buying our pocket squares, or calling us if you need an architect. Take care, everyone. Have a great day. And I will see you all in the next episode of Heiser Says. Bye for now.